Hello everybody, hope you had a good night last night. Um, it's a rainy day today, so we're gonna do some napping and some tool work. So I have this piece of copper that I got from the Kinawa Peninsula from Iroquois Mine off of, I actually bought it off Etsy. And um, this piece actually popped off. Oops, sorry, this piece actually broke off. So what I wanna do is try to refine this down into like a picker. And then this one here, I may try to refine down into another picker. I want to try to get some finer, sharper edges, and I'm having a hard time doing that with antler and bone. It's not impossible, it's just more difficult. Um, and so what I want to do is make a copper picker. Um, the problem with antler and bone is it's really hard to have a really fine tip on it um, and have any type of actual pressure or be able to actually use it without it just crumbling and breaking. That's at least been my experience. And I feel like it gets worse in the summertime when you start getting into high humidity. It could be just a, a just could be, it could just be me thinking wrong, but that's just been my experience. So I'm going to try to shape these between, between a couple of rocks. And we'll start with this one because this one is the expendable piece. I really like this piece, so we'll play with this first and we'll see what we can do. So enough jabber John. We're going to go ahead and see if we can shape this. tools which we know that they were using copper I, I believe it was the I think it's the cotton cottonwood culture there was a culture in near Lake Superior I'm going off of memory so please forgive me um, there was a culture up in Michigan um, UP area I even believe Wisconsin that they were utilizing copper to make all types of stuff. Um, and they did it for hundreds of years. And then once materials became readily available for flint napping, they actually switched from using copper, at, um, copper as uh, tooling and started using it for more luxury items. To have a copper item was um, considered uh, Luck, uh, luck, luxurious or it was a, a material reserved for royalty of sorts um, there's a really cool um, video on YouTube it's uh, it, it's the copper culture and they go in depth I don't have it all memorized um, actually I might have a note card here hang on a second I have a hard time retaining information because there's so much to retain So the Lake Superior Basin copper tools were used because there were no good lithics. The old copper culture, the red ochre culture, and the glacial cone culture used copper. Um, the copper was being used 8,500 years ago, and then around the woodland period, imported, imported stone was available. And it was at that transition that they started to use um, copper in a more luxurious type, as I said earlier. But watch the video. I could be wrong. I'm, I'm fairly certain I'm correct, but I wouldn't say I'm 100% certain. Just trying to pass on some information. So we're going to go ahead and try to shape this piece. Um, but it's a really entertaining educational video. So. We're gonna see what we can do with this guy. Probably not gonna work at all, but we'll see. Because I believe they found they found getting the copper out of the rock to be quite laborious. I believe they were seeing. Calm down, ghost. Um, we they believe that they were using. Um, so the copper was in the veins of the rock and they were heating up water and blowing the rock out using hot and cold methods. I'd have to watch the video again to talk about it more eloquently, but I'm just trying to uh, see what we can do here. Now copper, as you work it, it's one of the materials that work hardens. 
Um, it gets harder as you work it. So we'll see how this goes. This is the first time me trying to do this, so I got some delamination going on here. So oh, there's a layer on this. It's in layers here. <clears throat> but we'll see how it goes. We'll just try to get it into a rough, a rough shape. And I'm gonna do what I can not to smash my fingers, but that's gonna happen, I'm sure. Out of practice with my blacksmithing skills. So we'll see how this goes. I'm assuming that this will not adhere to itself. But we'll see. It's actually getting warm as I hit it. Too obnoxious for you guys. So when I reached out to the guy <laughs> that I bought this material from, because I, I actually messaged him on Etsy, I said, hey, I'm looking for a piece of float copper or copper that I could use for notching, for flint napping. <clears throat> and he was like, well, that's a unique request. But he was able to put this piece on so I could buy it. But it was kind of an interesting exchange. I think people forget, especially nappers, that there are so many people that don't know anything about napping or even to think about it, honestly. So it's always interesting to see. You'll know when I miss because it'll be a completely different noise. It'll be my thumb. <laughs> Usually followed by profanities, but we'll try to keep those to a minimum if possible. Hopefully this video is halfway entertaining for you guys. We'll see. there's a way to hold on to this a little better. I gotta get my fingers out of the way. I could easily use my little anvil on my vise and hammer it with a hammer and be done, but to me that's cheating. I have my own sets of goals on how I want to do things. You guys are using copper go for it I'm not judging it's just I have my own set of goals and things that I want to try to accomplish no 
No judgment for me here. You do what you want to do. Granted, I still use a modern file. And that's because I don't really feel like sharpening all my antler on a rock. I ain't got time for that. I barely have time to do this, but... I want to be able to use it. So I'm making time. it up pretty good so it's getting a little a little wonky so here's what we're at it's like the it's like an, uh, an annoying little foot napping video huh? so we'll keep trying to squeeze it in here it'll probably curl and then we'll have to flip <clears throat> what we'll flatten it Breaking my hammer stone. I'm trying to get two warm to hold on to. Harder stone, we'll see if this is better. to get it neck down maybe a little thumb picker a little tiny one might switch gears and try to squish this side down a little bit Don't let, 
don't don't think that I'm not like sitting here going, oh, not the finger, not the finger, not the finger, not the finger, because I am. I'm doing my best. If I remember to, I'll add the link to that video for the copper culture. Whoops. I gotta go grab it. Sorry. It went flying. Wow. So I'm fairly certain this piece didn't want to be found. <laughs> Alright. Looks like I'll have some video editing to do. Or I might just keep it in there and you guys can fast forward through it. Left my safety glasses all the way over there. Come on, man. Alright. Safety glasses. Leather pad. Rocks. Okay. So here's where we're at. We're getting it pretty well condensed down. It's just taking a bit of effort. Um, it is definitely thicker in the tip. I would like to try to get it flattened out more, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to. Not without something. It's a lot of material to squeeze in. You would think something would have to buckle. Well, we'll keep trying. For a little longer, that is. question is, is do you think an ancient man would have went through all this trouble to take this piece and turn it into something for napping do you think they would have tried to do that it's possible it's hard to tell I was looking um, I did do some research and tried to find I did some research and I did try to find some examples of copper pressure flakers. Because in Michigan, it's a big deal to go out with a metal detector and metal detect for artifacts. And hundreds of thousands of artifacts have been found out of copper. And so there's a few museum pictures where they have a series of elongated, centrilical um, pieces that I would have probably considered a pressure flaker piece. And they have them labeled as awls, which is interesting. How do they know it's an awl? How do they know it's not a pressure flaker? Because you got to figure bone and wood does not preserve as well as what a metal would. And it's just interesting. And I know they have found a few um, artifacts of copper, you know, uh, of copper pressure flakers and stuff being used um, in some some regions but um, I think there was one that was shown from Jack Crafty on his channel again I'm going off of memory so please forgive me I'm not the leading expert in copper stuff I'm just trying to tell you what I know of but if you want to check out Jack Crafty's video he has one in there in relation to a copper pressure flaker but if you're thinking in terms of region, how many copper fr pressure flakers were found in Texas or um, northern Indiana or Georgia or Florida or any other state other than Michigan, Wisconsin, the Lake Superior Basin area? So 
It's just a thought. Again, there's no judgment from me on whether or not you use copper. I don't care. I'm just trying to ask some questions. That's all. You do what you want to do. Because that's what's part of the fun about flint napping is, is the variety of techniques and tools that you can use. Do your own thing. If you all did it the same way, it would be really freaking boring. I don't think my way is right, I don't think it's wrong. So we're just going to keep hammering this guy, and hopefully this isn't a, yeah, no, it's a 30 minute video. Hopefully you guys aren't bored to tears. getting close it's starting to try to curl which is fine if it curls on itself I don't it's fine with me it's just got to be solid enough although it is bugging me that it's curled tell you though, your hand-eye coordination definitely improves when flint mapping. Unless you do something dumb like that. It's like, oh look at me, I can I can hit anything I'm aiming at. Then miss. <laughs> Go figure. That's not a typical representation of filmography. I don't know what it is. Copper is harder than what you think it might be. At least for what I'm trying to do here. I don't know. Now I would normally sharpen this to a decent edge, but let's just kind of play here for a minute. Yeah, this would need set in a handle. It's just not quite big enough. It's a lot of pressure on the thumb joint. And my thumbnail is too close to the edge of the chert. If that catches the thumbnail, I'm going to be unhappy. But it works. It grabs. I just need to fix it somehow. Let's try a bigger rock, smaller handle. See if maybe a little more weight helps things. It's curling now. I think the hardest part is I hit my own finger. Because it's a small piece. I imagine if this hammer stone wasn't on my thigh, this would probably be going a little bit quicker. Because then you've got less deadening. 
you know. Seems like a good way to break a finger too. But I think we're getting there. Just gotta get it fixed. Too. I don't want it to tear, and that's what it's trying to do. It's trying to tear right across. So here's where we're at. It's trying to tear right across here. So we're trying to avoid that. But we are getting it neck down quite a bit. So we're going to keep at it. I think the bigger stone is helping. We try to flip it. And hit it. might be something I would have to get set in a handle. I had these grand visions of what this might look like and I was wrong. I was very, very wrong. Stay together. Dang, that's solid. <laughs> so we're getting it a bit more elongated now. It's definitely narrower. We can get it just a little bit more narrow. We could set this in a wooden handle. Maybe something like this. We've got a lot of meat here, so that fracture may not be an issue. I think it would only be fair if we do a wooden handle. We need to. Maybe we can do a bone handle. Stick it in there. Give me something to grab onto. That might be easier because it's already hollow. Maybe we'll do something like that, but we gotta get it a little bit thinner or narrower.
quit. Jerk. Not the prettiest, that's for sure. I have other leg bones too, so here's what we're at. I think that'll go maybe in here. Might have to do some gouging type stuff. Let's try that real quick. If we can get it to fit in there, we'll be in good shape. We will be in good shape. Break out some of the yuck in there. This is just an experiment here. I have other bones I'm just playing around at the moment. This is one I ditched because it was super brittle on the tip. Just uh, let's maybe do this one. Fit in there. Might be in good shape. I'll probably have to wrap sinew around the end to keep it from breaking. Let's see what we got here. already cut down that might work I'm saying that down a little bit well, here we go there's a little bitty one oh it's too loose shucks This end in here. Now I had planned on cutting this with a with a flake and all that jazz, but it's already cut. too far, only for me to not like it. If you do want to cut bone or antler, what you would do is you would take a flay that you put some teeth in and you would score all the way around. And you would just keep going all the way around and then you would break it at that score line and then sand it smooth. That's how you would do that. If you were curious.
He's got some sharp edges on those bones, so I'm trying to get rid of it. There we go. Alright. I should be able to hammer that in, but it might split, so we'll see what happens. Just gotta be snug enough to where it doesn't pop out very easily. There it goes. Oh, you see right there, it split the bone. If I ground gouge this and then put sinew around it, it'll help keep that split from going further. So we'll probably do that, but for now, for testing purposes. We're just gonna go ahead and leave it alone. Maybe I could tie a piece of leather lace around it first. So here's a cool whipping if you guys are interested. This is pretty weak stuff, so it might just break. What you do is you start with a loop, okay? And you leave a tail end at the end where you want it to stop, and then you just wrap this around. Do your best to keep this parallel. If it crosses over, it can sometimes cause a problem with excess friction. This is just a temporary whipping here. So go like so. You can bring it around now. And you can do your wrap. It's neat, neat and tidy. Best you can. And you can also soak the, the, the leather. You can do this with sinew also. Sinew, rawhide, whatever. You're going to take this, and you're going to feed it through the loop. Hopefully you can see all this, and I wasn't being a dingleberry. And then you can pull this, and then that draws it tight. See that? I can show you one more time if you're interested. Maybe. Let me show you one more time. Because I don't think I did any of that in frame, because I'm a knucklehead. Alright, here's where we got. Here's what we got, right? This angle is going to be weird, so we're going to create a loop, okay? So you got your loop. This is awkward for me, so bear with me a sec. You got your loop, I'm going to cover it with my finger. Take your tail end, bring it around, and then you're going to wrap around. Make it neat and tidy. You don't have to apply a ton of tension, just enough. Okay, so now we're not going to be able to do a full wrap, so now this is going to go through. We're just going to hold that tail right here with my thumb, and we're going to pull the slack. And then you can actually take both of them and pull them against one another, and that'll draw it tight. And like I said, this is pretty weak lacing. So we're just going to tuck that under. Grab an obsidian flake or something that we got handy. We'll cut that off. Dig in my pile here. Cut that tail off. We can cut this tail off. And then we can shift this. Oh darn it, not too much. I overshot just a little. God darn it. Come on, get on there. There. That probably won't stay forever, but there you go. Just a bone of the whipping. And now we can dress this edge. Let's see what we got here. Maybe we could do this one here. Oh yeah, that's a terrible noise.
laying around here somewhere. There we go, that's, I believe, sandstone. a little rough but I think it'll do its purpose. Let's try let's test it out. I don't remember what this is from but here's a little piece that I was working on. Let's just give it a little test, see if it's durable. mostly be used for edge picking anyway, so let's see. It's plenty durable. The bone is what's weak. <laughs> Let's do something different. But that's working just fine. I think it's a piece of raw Texas. Let's see if I got anything a little bit more refined here we can pick at. We got this little guy. I think I was doing something with it, but I don't remember. It's much thinner, so let's test this guy out. Bone handle won't last long, that's for sure. Let's see what we got cooking here. I mean, it's working pretty good. Yeah, it's working. This is so nice because a tip like this usually just degrades so quickly. So this will be a nice addition to my toolkit. I'll probably get I'll get rid of the leather lace um, and use sinew to tie everything in. I got sinew in the house, so we'll wrap that. And uh, we might start using this guy for finish work and picking. When it strikes, you know. When I feel like it's nice, so it is weak, so it is weak this way, so I gotta be careful. I definitely gotta try to make sure to pick up and down, which limits me a little bit on what I'm doing, but not too bad. I like to be able to, you know, go from the side, go up and down, it just depends. Probably swap the handle out too or something else. Yeah, I think that's yeah, I mean, that's great. So let's test. Let's test like so here's this bone piece. Let's test this guy out. Now watch, it'll probably perform just as good, because I'm trying to prove that it doesn't. So this is of course going to work like a charm now. But yeah, that's, you can see that it's, it's well, no, you can't see because the camera, it's chipped right here. It is degrading, 
I, I will admit. But it is working. I mean, I might have to revisit this tool. Maybe I was just being dumb with it. There's a piece of rope. That might be my fault. But it'll do serrations. I mean, that's wicked sharp. Hmm. Well, we made it, so we'll keep playing with it. We'll get it cleaned up and put it maybe put it in a different handle and whatnot, so. But I'm going to stop this video and then maybe work on some Georgetown in another video. Here's what we got. Little, little hand hammered copper pressure flaker. Uh, edge picker, whatever you want to call it. I hope that didn't bore you guys too much. I uh, appreciate you guys watching. Thanks.